physical and chemical processes are always, at least in principle, reversible. That is, if two molecules, A and B, collide, and some bonds are made and or broken to make two new molecules, C and D, you can envision C and D colliding reverting back to A and B in exactly the reverse of the first process. If a particular reaction is exothermic in the forward direction, then its reverse is endothermic, but with exactly the same amount of heat transferred. In other words, if a particular reaction has a negative delta H, then its reverse has the same magnitude of its delta H but with the opposite sign. Similarly, if a particular reaction is entropically favorable in the forward direction, then its reverse is entropically unfavorable, but with the same magnitude. And if delta H and delta S are of opposite signs for reverse reactions, that means that delta G must also be of opposite sign. Reaction coordinate diagrams can be used to help us understand this. Imagine that we have a forward reaction, A plus B goes to C plus D, and let's say it's spontaneous with some negative delta G. As A and B collide, they must do so with sufficient kinetic energy to surmount the activation energy barrier for that forward reaction. If they do so, then the reaction actually occurs and C and D are formed. But then we have C and D floating around, and if they collide with each other in just the right orientation and uh, enough kinetic energy to surmount this activation energy barrier, then the reverse reaction happens. A and B are reformed. Taken together, this is called the principle of microscopic reversibility that every individual chemical reaction can be reversed if the products collide with each other in the precise orientation and with sufficient kinetic energy to go backward. And all of the thermodynamic quantities, delta H, delta S, and delta G, are equal magnitude but opposite sign for this reverse process. Of course, you may be wondering, if one reaction is more favorable than the other, why can both reactions still happen? This is a great question, and one of the most challenging concepts for chemistry students to understand. Non-spontaneous reactions aren't exactly impossible, they're just difficult, and less favorable than their reverse reactions. You might say they're less likely. In fact, non-spontaneous reactions do occur if there's enough kinetic energy uh, between the, the molecules that need to collide. The reverse reactions just also occur, and occur more frequently. The more spontaneous a reaction is, that is, the larger the magnitude of delta G, the bigger the difference in activation energies between the forward and reverse reactions, so the harder and less likely the reverse reaction is to occur. Overall, this leads us to one of the most important phenomena in chemistry, dynamic equilibrium, which is the basis of the next several videos.